All right, thanks for watching, and in the next two videos, we'll discuss how the notion of a limb soup relates to the classical notion of a limit. But first, let me remind you what a limb soup is. So all that it is, it's the supremum of your sequence, but after a very long time. So the idea is as follows. Suppose you have a sequence Sn, then what you do, you consider a very large threshold, capital N, and you're looking at the supremum of your sequence after capital N. So it's the supremum of Sn after capital N. But lastly, to say that capital N is very large is just the same as taking the limit as capital N goes to infinity. So again, it's the supremum of Sn, but after a very long time. And again, the important thing to understand, even though Sn doesn't always converge, the limb soup always exists, or is infinity. However, what we want to show today is that if your sequence converges to S, then your limb soup also has to equal to S. So the limb soup strictly speaking, is a generalization of the notion of a limit. So, a fact, if Sn converges to S, then the limb soup, as n goes to infinity of Sn, which in this case coincides with the limb, in, limb inf, as n goes to infinity of Sn, and that equals to S. And one reason I'm really doing this proof is because it's an elegant blend of the notion of a limit and the notion of limb soup. So proof. So first of all, step one, of course, let epsilon be given. Given. And first of all, since the limit of Sn is S, what this means is eventually the values of Sn get very close to S. So since Sn converges to S, um, there is... Um, so usually we write capital N, but because we already have capital N from before, there is N1 such that if uh, N is bigger than N1, then absolute value of Sn minus S is less than epsilon. But in particular, we also have that Sn minus S is less than epsilon. You see, this is a bit stronger. This is saying the absolute value of your quantity is less than epsilon, but then for sure your quantity also has to be less than epsilon. And so the, what this is saying is that actually for large enough N, Sn is bounded by S plus epsilon. So for all n bigger than n1. So what is happening here? And this is actually very, very important. So what we have, we have our sequence Sn, might look again crazy like that. And we're saying that after capital N1 your sequence is bounded above by S plus epsilon. But then in particular, the largest value of the sequence or the supremum also has to be bounded above by S plus epsilon. So Sn where N is bigger than N1 also has to be smaller than S plus epsilon, or at least less than or equal, but then The suprema of Sn, where n is bigger than cap n1, has to be less than or equal to s plus epsilon. Now, the only problem is this n1 is fixed. And remember in the definition of limb soup, you have a capital N, which you would like to blow up to infinity. But here's the thing, and this is really what makes that proof work. Suppose you consider another capital N that's very large. The question is, what happens to the supremum of Sn 
after capital M. Well, in this picture is this thing. So the suprema of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N. Well, notice this supremum is actually much smaller than this one. And this is completely normal and always happens. Why? Because if you consider the first supremum, you have lots of values of n to compare to, but here you have fewer values to compare to. That's why the supremum is becoming smaller. Remember that analogy. If you have a class of 10 students and the highest score is 98, and suddenly five students drop out, then the highest score is probably smaller, maybe a 70 or something, if the students are very good. And therefore, what we also have is that if capital N is bigger, so if capital N is bigger than N1, then this supremum of Sn, where n is bigger than n1, well, it's less, sorry, this, the higher supremum, so this one, okay, is less than the first supremum, but we also know that this is less than s plus epsilon. So for sure, this supremum has to be less than or equal to s plus epsilon. And therefore, since this is true for all capital N, it's also true in the limit. So if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of that supremum, so the limit as capital N goes to infinity of that supremum, it's also bound to be less than or equal to s plus epsilon. But what is that limit? It's precisely the limb sup. So what we're saying is, in fact, the limb soup also has to be less than or equal to s plus epsilon. So again, this thing is the limb soup. So we conclude the limb soup has to be less than or equal to s plus epsilon. And since epsilon was arbitrary, it follows that the limb soup actually has to be less than or equal to s. So since again, epsilon was arbitrary. Very good, and so what have we shown? We've shown that if Sn converges to S, the limb sub is less than or equal to the limit. But now we wanna show something uh, similar for limb inf, but the nice thing is we don't actually have to show it. So we don't have to repeat the proof in some sense, because what do we know about the limb inf? Well, we have this very nice identity that is minus the limb soup of minus Sn. But here's the important thing. What do we know about minus Sn? It converges to minus S. So now we can just use the result in step one. And so we know that the limb soup of this has to be less than or equal to this limit. So then by step one, we know that the limb soup as n goes to infinity of minus Sn, has to be less than or equal to minus S. And therefore, minus the limb soup has to be greater or equal to minus minus S, which is S. And therefore, we conclude that the limb inf, as n goes to infinity of Sn, has to be greater or equal to S. And it turns out you can just combine both of them to get our conclusion. So step three. So what do we know? We know that the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn is less than or equal to S, which is less than or equal to the limit of Sn. But limb inf is smaller than the limb soup of, again, Sn, 
And therefore, what do we get? The limb soup is less than or equal to S is less than or equal to the limb soup. So indeed, we get that the limb soup has to be equal to S. Equals S. And similarly, you can show that it's equal to the limb inf. I can just do the same spiel. And therefore we're done. If S sign converges to S, then the limits have to be, the limb sub and limb inf have to be equal to S. And by the way, the same proof also works, I mean, uh, the same result also works for S equals infinity or minus infinity with, with a different proof. All right, thank you very much.